ministry now. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Andres Garcia. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we just thank you for Andres Garcia tonight. And know that I'm giving you a voice. I'm giving you a voice of distinction, says the Lord. And know I'm bringing you into a place where ears will hear what it is that you have to say. And the things that I'm putting within your mouth to say uh, will be those words that establish the path of integrity. For did I not say that I'm raising up uh, repairers of the breach? Did I not say in Isaiah 58 uh, that I'm raising up the restorer of those, the, the, tw- the paths to dwell in? Did I not say that I'm raising up uh, those who, who would lay foundations for generations? Uh, so get ready, uh, Andreas, because I'm about to fill your mouth with my words, uh, and my words will bring life, and my words will bring light, for you shall be the light and the salt uh, uh, in your environment, uh, and people will know righteousness because of what I am going to do in and through you, says the Lord, for I love you, and I am releasing upon you fresh visitation, says God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sarah, Ali, oh boy. Uh, What does that mean? Oh boy. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen, Sarah. Amen. God says it has got a call upon your life, uh, that there's a fresh anointing uh, that he's about to release upon you. Uh, God says, get ready, uh, for you have been saved many times uh, from circumstances in which the enemy uh, has tried to to distract you uh, and to pull you aside uh, and to keep you from your purpose. But no, uh, the Lord says, uh, my thoughts are towards you are thoughts of good and not evil, uh, that I love you with an everlasting love, uh, and I've drawn you with that loving kindness, uh, and you have not yet seen what it is the final product will be, but rest in me, wait in me, know me, saith the Lord, be still and know that I am God. For did I not say, even in Daniel, that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits, and I am going to bring you into a a place of great exploit and a place of great strength because of the knowing that you will have of me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 For Lou Ella Lou, the Lord says, my daughter, surely there is a new day that that is dawning in thy life. uh, And that which is on the horizon for you is amazing, saith God. uh, For even though it seems that things have been closed and things have been shut, uh, even in in areas of your life, know that I am about to open up things uh, and you are about to move forward, saith God. uh, And surely I have been giving you strategies on what to do in the days to come. And know, saith God, that as you would implement the strategies that I give unto you, you shall see that my hand is at work saith God and I shall send people around you that shall be there and shall hold your hands up even as Aaron and Ur held up the hands of Moses surely there shall be those that will hold up your hands saith God as you do that which I have put within thy heart to do get ready my daughter for a new day is dawning in thy life saith God hallelujah Mira Grasso you said you would love a ministry thank you hallelujah so Mira, here's the ministry of the Lord. Just raise your hands to the Lord right now. God says that this is a time of visitation. This is a time of coming into knowing me in great intimacy, for I am drawing you. For did I not say in my word, if you abide in me and I abide in you? Oh, yes, this is a time of abiding. For even when Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he was not talking about things in the natural, but he was talking about you abiding in him and him abiding in you. And as you become this abiding couple, as you are coupled with Jesus, as you are corporately engaged with Jesus, there is going to be a release of a, of a release of, of, of fruitfulness. For even as the vine dresser is the Lord, and, and as you abide in Christ, the fruitfulness will cause you to have favor with the Lord, 
that have favor to bring glory to the Father. So get ready, my daughter, for I am working even in the midst of relationships. There has been dysfunction. There has been disorientation. There has been confusion. But I am causing the voices that are causing the frustrations to be silent so that there might be a hearing in the ear and a knowing in the spirit that I am at work on your behalf. So get ready for this at a time in a season of change, says the Lord. Amen. Arlene Ice Q. Hallelujah. I think that's how you say it. Amen. Arlene, I just see that God is making connections for you, and he's putting people there to, to, uh, around you, amen, to help you to carry out a vision that God has put within your heart. Uh, and God says, my daughter, the vision that I put within your heart even 12 years ago, even though you have not yet seen all of the fulfillment of that vision, uh, know that step by step the vision is coming to pass, saith God, uh, and know that there even shall be an acceleration even in these days, saith the Lord, uh, get ready, my my daughter for things are accelerating and you're going to find yourself moving very quickly to do all that I have put within thee saith God uh, and no saith God I shall give you the energy I shall give you the strength uh, I shall give you the know-how it shall be downloaded into thy spirit to be able to carry out the plan saith God that I have mapped out for you and I just see like a blueprint that's laying out before you uh, and God says all of that which I have given unto you shall be accomplished saith God for the Lord says, you've been faithful, my daughter, and surely because of your faithfulness, I shall honor you greatly, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Shirley Sin in Pensacola. Exclamation point. Hallelujah. Amen. I see a pin in your hand and God says that there is a con contractual things that need to be uh, done. They need to be finalized. And I see God putting you in a place of being able to finalize the circumstances and the situations uh, in which you are in. There have been a lot of uh, untied areas, uh, areas left undone, uh, but God is bringing uh, uh, together all of the pieces. He's call is causing all the puzzle pieces to come together and the picture is going to be complete. Uh, the project is going to be fulfilled uh, and the purpose and the plan of God uh, is going to be released in its fullness. Uh, he says, be ready uh, even now as the pen is in your hand. Uh, the Bible says that, that, that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And, and it's your faith that's in action uh, that is, is being moved by this pen. Uh, and the pen is bringing forth uh, the fullness of what God has promised. So God says, uh, keep that pen uh, in the writing. Keep that pen in, uh, in, on the paper. Keep uh, fulfilling uh, and writing out and completing those things that need to be done. I don't know if there's something that you do in the natural that has to do with penmanship, but I keep on seeing it's like a quill pen of a feather and it's in your hand and God says uh, that this is a time uh, in which those things uh, shall be completed and accomplished, saith the Lord. Amen. Teresa Davis Ashworth, the Lord says, my daughter, surely I have put within thee a heart of a worshiper and I have caused you to worship me time and time again. And I just see a vision of you down on your knees, uh, worshiping the Lord. And the Lord says, surely that heart of worship has drawn thee closer and closer unto me. And the Lord says, my daughter, I am opening doors for you, doors that have been closed, saith God. But no, even though the door has been closed, they have not been locked. And now is the time that those doors shall open, saith God. And you shall walk through these doors, saith the Lord. You shall walk through the doors with a great anointing upon thy life. And I just see that as you're walking through these doors, there's bondages that are breaking off. There's things in the, in the realm of the spirit, in, in the kingdom of darkness that's being destroyed. And the Lord says, my daughter, you're going to walk, walk even in a greater anointing in this next season of thy life, saith God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our brother and sister sitting right here in the second row, just stand up and raise your hands to the Lord if you don't mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is, is anointing you afresh tonight. Uh, sister, as you kept on um, snapping your fingers, uh, it, it was getting my attention, but God said it's, it's more, more than that. It's a, it's, a, it's a faith thing because that when you're snapping your fingers, it's, it's changing uh, the, the very environment uh, that's around you. It's like uh, that God has given you um, an awareness uh, of the Spirit 
spirit. Uh, and even though you might not all the time recognize what you're doing, but when you snap, it's like a, it's, it's like even as a, 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 a person would go into the woods and, and there would be an animal and they would uh, uh, make a sound and it would scare that animal and cause it to flee. That, that what God has put in inside of you is a, is a weapon that causes a, the, the, the demonic atmosphere to be on charge, to, to, to run and to flee. And God says uh, that there have been attacks that, that you, you both have been experiencing. The enemy has tried to come in and, and, and try to limit your, your mobility. He's tried to, to limit your accessibility. Uh, and God says that this is a time uh, where, where every fetter, uh, where every chain is being broken uh, and you're going to find yourself moving uh, into a season of freedom uh, and a season of liberty, uh, that there's going to be that release uh, that's going to come where in times past you felt like uh, you had to work twice as hard to get something done uh, and that you would see other people and, and, and they would say it's so easy, but it wasn't so easy. But God says he's bringing you uh, into a place uh, of ease. And, and, and there was a, a time uh, where Jesus came off the mountain of transfiguration and, and, and the disciples were talking with the scribes and the Pharisees uh, and Jesus said, what do you have to talk with them about? Uh, and, and, and the disciples said, well, there's this boy uh, that he's uh, got a spirit and we tried to get it out of him uh, and it wouldn't come. Uh, and, and, and Jesus said, you faithless generation, how long am I going to have to deal with you? Uh, and, and then he goes on uh, and he says to the father, do you believe? Uh, and he says, I believe, but help us thy my unbelief. And that's where you have been. Uh, you've been in the Lord, help us thou my unbelief. Uh, and, 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 the, and then Jesus said uh, to his disciples, uh, this kind don't come out except by prayer and fasting. Uh, and he wasn't talking about the demon coming out. He was talking about the doubt and unbelief coming out. Uh, and God says that you have moved into a season uh, where you felt that things uh, were very difficult, that you were working harder. Uh, but yes, uh, that labor uh, was intensive, uh, but it was fulfilling uh, and it was effective because it was rooting out the doubt uh, and the unbelief. Uh, and there was even conversations that you've had uh, where you said, even if you don't, we're still going to serve him. Uh, just like the children of Israel before the king of uh, 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 King Nebuchadnezzar, he says, even if the Lord doesn't deliver us from that fiery fur furnace, we're not going to bow down. Uh, we're not going to compromise. Uh, we're going to keep going forward uh, where others have offered easy ways out. Uh, God said uh, that these things don't come out by but, but prayer and fasting. Uh, and as you've dedicated yourself to prayer uh, and increasing your fasting, uh, you are positioning yourself uh, where doubt and fear uh, and unbelief are not going to be able uh, to hinder the work of God uh, because many people are, are in an area where they're blaming the devil uh, that's already been defeated uh, and what's really causing the problem uh, is not the devil uh, because he doesn't have anything but the power of deception uh, which is rooted in unbelief uh, and so what God is doing uh, is he's bringing you to a place of breaking uh, the doubt uh, and the fear and the unbelief uh, and now the enemy uh, is going to be on the run like never before uh, and there's going to be such an ease uh, and whenever there's an obstacle uh, you're going to know uh, that it's time to root out that doubt and unbelief once again uh, everybody has doubts uh, but unbelief is a choice uh, and, and so and, and God is bringing you into that place of being consecrated set out before him, but there is going to be an ease and people are going to recognize not because of the fruitfulness of the ministry in regard to the release and the breakthrough and the manifestation of God, but because they are going to recognize the anointing that has come with fellowship, that anointing that has come with supping with him, that anointing that has come with knowing him intimately because God is bringing you into that anointing that Paul prayed Ephesus over. And he said these words. He says, to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God and to him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think according to the power that works inside of him. And this knowledge of the love that goes beyond what you've known is going to bring you into the exceedingly abundantly and above, says the Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Ah, Janice Boone. I see the Lord working in your family. And God says, my daughter, surely I am doing a mighty work in thy family and in family members that you have been praying for and that, that you have been crying out unto me to move and to work, saith God. Uh, and surely I am moving and I am working even behind the scenes. Uh, and I am putting things into place and I'm putting things into order, saith the Lord. Uh, and even in the next six months, you're going to see those things that I have been putting into place and into order. You shall begin to see them in the natural, saith God, uh, for surely I say unto thee, uh, I am working in thy family, and I am making transformation in their lives, uh, and I am bringing change, saith God, uh, for there has been change that you have been crying out to, uh, and you do know that it is not man that can make changes, uh, but you know it is only me, uh, and surely I am making changes in some family members that you have been crying out unto. The Lord says, get ready, for you're going to see it in the natural, saith at the Lord. 20, Manji, um, Natang. Hallelujah. When I looked at your name, Chantel, I saw, I saw you and Elijah, and I saw um, uh, uh, my, my, my goddaughter, uh, Tahila. I saw you in an elevator, and God is lifting you up into a higher place. That This is a time and a season to be elevated. This is a time and a season to go into a higher place, into the heavenly realm, to reach into the heavenly realm, and to walk in the place of the heavenlies. Uh, the last couple times that you've led praise and worship, there's been such a presence of the Lord that has come and God says it's because I am putting her into a place that's lifting her high and she is being lifted up into a deeper place into a higher place with me so God says get ready for in this season you're going to find elevations there, there there's going to be just like when you climb into high altitudes is it, and, and the air is thin there's going to be places in the presence of the Lord that just takes your breath away because of the presence of the Lord and now you're coming into a season where even the little baby is going to be begin to have uh, seasons of experience with the Lord, uh, being able to see dreams, uh, have visions, be able to see angels, uh, and, and, and those things that God uh, has been working on the heart of Elijah, this is a time of fulfillment. God says, get ready, uh, for in this time of elevation, uh, there is a time of fulfillment, uh, says the Lord God. Amen. Landon Jeffers, when I looked at your name, I heard the Lord say, I am making a warrior out of him. And the Lord says, my son, you're going to be a mighty warrior and one that is able to do battle even in the heavenlies. And I shall teach you, saith the Lord, and I shall teach you to be very skillful in the things that you will do in the realm of the spirit. For the gifts of the spirit are within thee, saith God, and you shall begin to move and operate even in the gifts of the spirit, even in a deeper way than you've ever experienced. And I shall make you very precise in the things that you will do in the things that you will speak for I shall fill your mouth with my words saith God and you shall speak those words saith the Lord and even as you would speak that which I give unto thee to speak atmosphere shall change atmosphere shall change around people atmosphere shall change around regions saith God for I am teaching thee saith the Lord to be a mighty warrior a mighty warrior for me says God Hallelujah. Sister Patty, Pastor Patty, uh, there's an, a fresh anointing that God's bringing to you. Uh, there's that portion of scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes that says that when you come into the house of the Lord, uh, to, 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 to be quiet in the house of the Lord. And this is a, a season that God is bringing you uh, into a, a time of strategy and planning. Uh, and it's been like a resting season. Uh, even though there's been a restless, uh, a wrestling uh, that's been going on uh, inside because of the, the COVID and the circumstances and the many responsibilities that that you hold in the ministry uh, and as a pastor of the church. Uh, but God says uh, that as things begin to change, uh, that there is going to be a release of, of, of fresh vision. There's going to be a release of an infusion uh, uh, of fresh people. I see uh, just like when David went into the cave of Adulam uh, and there were those who were discouraged and distressed and discontent. Uh, and God says uh, that he's going to raise up uh, out, of, uh, out of the ashes uh, of, of this, uh, this, uh, this particular pandemic. Uh, he's going to raise up out of the ashes people who know uh, how to touch the hem uh, of, of Jesus's garment, people who know uh, how to press in, people who know uh, how to speak uh, and to say, uh, and it happens. Uh, and God says, get ready because you're going to be a facilitator, a facilitator. Uh, it's, it's, you're going to begin to find uh, that the working of the ministry is going to be more uh, like a classroom facilitating people uh, to do the working of the ministry. Uh, and just like the Bible says uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, 
sure uh, that as each one begins to do their share, uh, there's growth to the body, uh, that you're going to begin to see an explosion in growth. People are not going to understand it, uh, but there's going to be a release uh, of a fresh anointing, a fresh touch, uh, and that this is a season uh, and a time uh, of, of, of new planning and strategies. Jesus said, uh, no man goes out to war unless he first knows uh, what he's up against. No man builds a building uh, unless he's first counted the cost. Both of those uh, are in references into st about having strategies, about having blueprints, and God is putting you in this season uh, of, of being rejuvenated and resting uh, so that you might be able to, to go in full steam. I see you uh, in your ministry like a horse uh, getting ready to come out of the gate uh, and, and, and getting ready to run the race like you've never run before. Uh, so God says, get ready uh, for in this time where it seems like there's been a wrestling going on and everyone is restless, uh, that there is going to be a fresh rest that comes and reju rejuvenates you, uh, that you might be able uh, to fulfill what it is that God has promised in the days to come. Amen. Trish Moyer, when I looked at your name, I heard this song that was written by Ruth Ward Heflin, and it could almost be your theme song. And this song goes like this. So many miracles you've done. So many miracles you've done. So many miracles you've done. You've done for me. So many miracles you've done. Yes, Lord. So many miracles you've done. So many miracles you've done. You've done for me. And the Lord says, surely, my daughter, I have done many miracles in thy life. Uh, but no, saith God, that I am not finished doing miracles. Uh, for surely, my daughter, I have called you to walk a miracle walk with thy God. Uh, and there shall be miracles on every side. Uh, there shall be miracles on the right hand. And there shall be miracles on the left hand, saith God. Uh, and you shall see me work miracles, saith God, uh, even in place is where there are things that are going on uh, that in the natural they are impossible but no saith God that you serve a miracle working God uh, and I shall work miracle after miracle after miracle saith the Lord uh, and even when things get down to zero uh, no saith God there shall be a miracle and the Lord says uh, there will be times that you would say Lord I only need one more miracle and the Lord Lord says even as you would open up your mouth and declare I only need one more miracle you shall have the miracle says God oh for the theme of your life will be so many miracles Lord you have done saith God amen 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 Kyle Smith you're watching from home would love a word but you don't have Facebook so you're watching with Brandy Holmes so this is for you, Kyle, just so that you know who it is that I'm speaking to. I saw you in the boat, and I saw Jesus walking on the waters, and God says that it's time to step out and, and, and step into a new place. It's a time to step out and to make new steps with him, says the Lord. Just like Peter walked on the water, you're going to walk into some new places that you've not walked before. There's been some difficulties in various places that you've walked, and even some failures in the places that you walk, but God says uh, that there's a, a, a new way in front of you, uh, and God says, take that new step. Take that fresh step. Don't walk uh, the same way that you walked before, uh, but God is changing your destination, uh, and, and there, were, there were many disciples in that boat, uh, but there was only one that got out to walk into a new place. Uh, they all could have walked in a new place. They all could have walked into the miraculous. They all could have defiled gravity uh, and buoyancy and walked on the waters, uh, but, but only 
only one did. He was the one that bid Jesus to bid him to come. And so God says to you tonight, he says, if you are hungry for me to call upon you, I will have you walk into new places. I will have you walk in places that are places that you've never imagined that you would be able to walk in above the circumstances that seem to be drowning, that seem to be deadly, that he would cause you to walk into a new place, a place of excitement, a place of adventure. Jesus always walks in that place of excitement and in that place of adventure. And that's where God wants to put your feet, in a place of excitement, in a place of adventure. So God says, step out of the boat and walk, walk towards me. Oh yes, I see that picture. It's a famous picture. They even use the picture for the um the, 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 the light, sight, and sound of, of play of Jesus in, in, um, in Pennsylvania. And it's a hand reaching out of the water and, and the hand of Jesus reaching out to grab that hand. And God says that I will pull you out and I will pull you above uh, every storm that's in your life uh, if you will just reach for me, says the Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mary Paglio. I just see the Lord laying his hand upon your head. And as he's putting his hand upon your head, I see a new anointing being placed upon your life. And the Lord says, there is a new anointing coming upon your life for the new season that you are entering into, saith God. And the Lord says, that which you have known yesterday will not be enough for what you are going into and what you are be about to walk into, says the Lord. So do not depend on yesterday's anointing, saith God, but reach out. Out and receive the new anointing that I have for you today, saith God. But there is a new anointing that you shall begin to walk in, saith the Lord. And the new season that you are stepping into, it shall be an amazing season. It shall be a glorious season. It shall be a season, saith the Lord, where you shall begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles in even a greater dimension, saith God. And even people that are around you, saith the Lord, they shall begin to experience the miraculous power of of thy God, for you shall begin to speak and you shall begin to share and you shall begin to testify of what I am able to do and what I have done. And faith shall arise in the hearts of those that are listening unto thee, and they shall take a hold of that which they need, and miracles shall happen, saith God. There shall be signs and there shall be wonders. Therefore I say unto thee, my daughter, a new anointing does come upon thee even this night, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Our dear sister right here in the third row, could you just stand to your feet and raise your hands? Hallelujah. I just saw that the Lord is stretching out your branches, that there's been some stretchings that have been in your life and they haven't exactly been comfortable, but God says that this has been increasing you, that you're being increased in this timing and this season. There's a lot of things that you have before the Lord as questions. You're, you have a lot of concerns that, that are in your life and, and God says that this is a time that he's gonna begin to, to bring to you answers. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know and that this is the time in which you're gonna begin to have uh, your spiritual connection with God just to bring a fresh revelation. There's going to be a, a season of, of just being able to have dreams and visions like you've not had before, and they're gonna be dreams with such clarity and an understanding uh, because God says uh, that there's a path before you that you have not yet seen, uh, and as your eyes are being opened uh, and you come into this knowledge uh, of God, into this place uh, of knowing him in greater measure, uh, that those things that have been around you, that they've been almost like uh, the swarming of bees around you, uh, they're going to cease. And God is bringing you uh, into this place of enlargement. And in this place of enlargement, you're going to find that your branches are going to bring uh, more fruitfulness and more shade. Uh, you're going to find your capacity to reach others uh, to be enlarged. And you're going to find uh, that even though your branches are, are going uh, farther, that you're not going to have to be concerned about whether you'll be um, blown over by the storms and the oppositions because God says uh, you're also going to experience the deepness of your roots going uh, into the ground, going uh, into a strong and firm foundation. Uh, God says this is a day and this is a time uh, of enlargement and increase, saith the Lord. Uh, so watch and see as I bring you uh, into a greater knowing uh, of me. Amen. 
Samantha Muthu. I just see a fire that is shut up inside of you. And I hear that scripture that it's like fire shut up in my bones. Uh, and the Lord says, my daughter, I have filled thee with a great fire. And at times there's a great burning that is within thee, saith God. Uh, but no, saith the Lord, the fire that I have put within thee, uh, it shall propel thee even into the next dimension. It shall propel thee even into the next level, saith God. Uh, for there is such a hunger and there is such a thirst for the things of God. Uh, and you have experienced experienced God in many measures and many depths, but the Lord says, I'm taking you to a new depth. I'm taking you into a new measure, saith the Lord. And I just see, uh, it, I believe it's in the book of Isaiah where he, the, the, the prophet measured out an, uh, an, another, what is it? A hundred meters or what? Another thousand. A thousand meters. And I just see that measuring out and you going out into the deep waters uh, and the waters that you are, that God is moving you into, they are going to be waters uh, that you're going to be able to swim in and you're going to swim in the things of God in a new way and the Lord says my daughter that fire that I have put within thee it shall propel thee to the next level saith the Lord hallelujah Brother Alex Wallace, the Lord uh, had put in that scripture in, in my heart concerning uh, uh, Peter, and he's writing, he's writing about marriage, and he says, um, husbands, honor your wives as the precious vessel, for she's a joint heir with you in the grace of life, and when you honor her, that your prayers will go unanswered. They, they'll not go unanswered. And, and because you have been not only a, a, a wonderful husband and a leader and someone to stand uh, in, 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 um, in ministry as one with, with your wife, uh, but you've also honored her for for her position, and and that as a as a joint heir of the grace of life, that that you you've seen the oneness that you have, that you're getting ready to enter into a season because of the honor that you have for your wife. You're getting ready to enter into a season where your prayers are going to go. Uh, um, always answered. None of your prayers will be unanswered, that they'll all begin to come into a place. But those prayers that will be, un, that, that will be answered will be prayers uh, that line up with God's will and God's purpose. Uh, and he's saying that he's bringing you into a place uh, of great intercession, that, that you carry uh, one of the greatest ministry titles uh, that, that, that any man has, has ever carried. And, and that is the ministry title of, of Jesus the intercessor. For not only is he making intercession in Romans chapter 8, but the Bible tells us in Hebrews uh, that he's ever making intercession for us. That's the only ministry that he did uh, on the earth, uh, and, and he's still doing it in heaven. Uh, and God says that there's an anointing that you have for intercession, uh, intercession for people, intercession uh, for circumstances, intercession uh, for regions, for cities. Uh, and God says that there's going to be a release uh, of, of great movement in the realm of the Spirit, changing darkness into light. Uh, as you begin to pray because you are you have been faithful uh, in, in, in that scripture that Peter gives us uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, about how to honor your wife and because uh, you have stood with her and because you have honored her and respected her uh, and promoted her and, and, and stood as a, as a pillar uh, to her as she has carried on so many, many wonderful um, um, responsibilities and leadership. Uh, God says because of that now you're going to move into a position uh, that, that your prayer voice uh, is, is going to be like a George Mueller. Your prayer voice uh, is going to, to, to be like an EM Bounds. You're going to have a prayer voice and a prayer ministry that's going to be so distinctively fruitful and profitable uh, that people will be coming up just to learn how to touch God, to touch God, to know God, to, to sup with God, to be in the presence of God. And so God says, get ready for this at a time of entering into that intimacy, just like Jesus. Uh, Jesus would go early in the morning, uh, wake up and go and pray. He would pray late in the evening. He would go into the mountain and pray. Uh, after he finished ministry, he would go and pray. He was finding every opportunity to pray. And, and, and one expositor of the word said Jesus's ministry was not a ministry of preaching. It was a ministry of prayer. Uh, and it's the ministry that he's still doing. Uh, but I see the effectiveness uh, that came through the ministry of Jesus because of his ability to pray, uh, I see you coming into a deep place of prayer. So I don't know where you are in your prayer walk. Uh, I don't know how uh, you approach God, but God says uh, that your prayer walk is going to be key to the successes uh, of the ministry uh, in the future, saith the Lord God. 
Hallelujah. Has everybody here received ministry? Mm -hmm. All right. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to leave you with this song that Debbie sang the other night. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say? Je Why don't you stand to your feet and sing that with me? Oh, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah, turn my life around. Jehovah, turn my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah, turn my life around. Jehovah, turn my life around. Well, he makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. God bless you.